Hi everyone, welcome back to art. Today our focus is going to be on landscapes. We're going to learn a little bit about landscapes and we're going to create our own landscape artwork. So first, what is a landscape? A landscape is a picture or artwork that shows land outside. The main focus of the artwork should be the features um, of the land. So maybe the landforms um, or things that exist in nature outside. So here is an example of a landscape painting I made with another class this year. You can see I am showing the grass outside. I'm showing hills. There is a dirt path going up and down the hills. There are trees and there is a blue sky. This picture is a landscape because it shows land outside and the main focus or the main thing that I'm showing is the land. Sometimes people ask if there can be a house in a landscape. If I drew a house that took up my entire picture, that wouldn't be a landscape because the main focus is the house. But if I had a tiny little house that was up on this hill over here, this would still show a landscape because the main focus wouldn't be that house. The main focus that's still taking up the majority of my artwork would still be the land and the features of the land. Um, I'm going to put a few pictures of landscapes below this video that you can look at for some ideas for when you choose which landscape you want to draw. I'm also going to show you some um, more that I have. Um, on these calendars. These are just some old calendars that had some pretty landscape pictures, so I saved the calendars to use these pictures. So here is a landscape. This is a beautiful photograph of a landscape. Um, and I want to talk about three parts of a landscape right now that I want you to include in your artwork too. The three parts I want to talk about are the foreground. That's talking about the area that is closest to you in the picture the middle ground, so the area that's just a little ways away, and then the background, the area that's the furthest away from you. So I know this is just a picture. The whole thing is close to me, right? I'm touching the whole picture right now. But I'm talking about in the landscape. If I was actually there looking out and seeing this, if I could reach down in front of me and touch something, I would be touching the foreground because it would be closest to me. So if I was standing and looking out onto this beautiful landscape, I would be standing right here in the sand. So if I were to reach down, I could probably reach and touch, what are these? This is like moss or plants growing right here and this sand. So see on this hill, I'm standing right here at the bottom of my paper so I could reach out and touch this area. This is the foreground. It's closest to me. Um, it's lowest on my paper. That shows that it's closest to me too. And it usually has the most detail because your eyes can see more detail of things that are closer to you. When things get farther away, it's harder to see as much detail on them. So my foreground is the area that's closest to me um, if I were standing at this actual landscape, I could reach out and touch it with my hand all around me if I was really there. It's the lowest on my paper, and it usually has the most details that you can see. So for this landscape, this hill with these plants and this sand would be the foreground. The second area of a landscape, the middle ground. That would be the area that's a little bit higher up on my paper near the middle. The name middle ground is near the middle. Um, and if I were actually here at this landscape, I would have to take several steps to get to it, maybe like 10 steps. So if I were to walk over this hill, walk a little bit farther, my middle ground might be um, the edge of this hill and some of this sand right behind the hill. If I were standing here, I can't reach out and touch the middle ground. I have to walk over to it. Um, the middle ground might have a little bit less detail than the foreground because it is a little bit farther away the objects will appear a little bit smaller. So see how the grass here is this tall and the grass here is this tall. It's probably just because it's farther away. When things get farther away, they look smaller. So here's my foreground, here's my middle ground. It's near the middle of my paper. If I were actually standing in this landscape, I would have to walk several steps to go see it. 
Um, I can see a little bit less detail and the objects appear a little bit smaller. The last part of a landscape is the background. The background is the farthest point from me. Um, if I were standing in here in the landscape, there is a lot less detail because it's so far away, it's hard to see. And objects, if there are any objects, appear much smaller because they're so far away, so they really look a lot smaller. So in this landscape, my background would be this water area. I can see maybe this is a lake or an ocean. Um, that's in the background, and this sky and the clouds are in the background too. So the background is higher up on the paper. My foreground's the lowest, middle ground's in the middle, background is the highest up on my paper. It's the furthest back if I was really there. Um, the objects appear smaller and it has the least amount of detail. All right, let's look at one more example here before we create our own. So here is another landscape. I can see the foreground. Let's see if you can guess it first. The foreground is this area down here that has sticks and pine cones um, and some pebbles. If I were really in this landscape, I could reach out and touch all of that. It's near the bottom and it has the most detail. Look at that. I can see all the detail on those little ridges of pine cones. The middle ground, let's look at the middle of my paper, would be this area right here. I can't just reach out and touch it if I was standing here. I'd have to walk or swim over to it. Um, I don't see as many details and it's near the middle. So the middle ground in this one would be the water and um, some of the pebbles and sticks over here. So this section is the middle ground. The background is the furthest up on my painting or picture. Um, it shows the least amount of detail. So I can see there's trees, but I can't see like every single leaf on those trees. I can't see all the details like I can on the foreground. Um, it's the highest up, least amount of detail, and items look the smallest. My tree looks smaller than my pine cone. Are trees actually really smaller than pine cones? No. It's just because the tree is farther away, so it appears smaller. So foreground, middle ground, background. Okay, and then remember, a landscape shows the features of land, and that's the main focus of the painting. So if I look at this calendar that shows a wolf, outside, um, it's not a landscape. Even though I can see outside, I can see snow behind my wolf, the main focus of this artwork is the wolf and not the land. So this would not be a landscape. Okay, now that we know what landscapes are, I want you to create your own. You're going to draw and color your landscape today, and um, when you turn it in on Schoology, I want you to tell me and point to what area is the foreground, what area is the middle ground, and what area is the background in your painting or drawing. You can paint or draw color um, with whatever materials you have. So I'm going to create a quick landscape right here on this paper so that you can see. Since this landscape that I drew looks like um, hills and trees, I'm going to make a different kind of landscape for this one. So I think I will do mountains in the background and maybe um, maybe I'll do a body of water in the middle ground there. Kind of like that one that we looked at. So I might start with a line to show the foreground. So I can see this will be a hill of maybe grass or sand depending or snow depending on where my landscape is. Um, I have another, it's a little bit farther away, closer to the middle ground. I think I'll show a body of water. Um, maybe I'll put some trees. I'm using this black Sharpie so you can see it better. For yours, you'll want to start with pencil. Um, maybe I will put some trees. Now I'm closer to the middle ground right now, so my trees are not going to be too tall. My tallest trees would be in my foreground. So maybe I'll add a tree. Uh, I'm drawing pine trees. Right here. Now, if I was using pencil, I would have to erase this line, right? Um, but I'll just color over that. And then my background, maybe I'll have some very tiny trees very far away. 
Um, the background trees I'll draw less detail on. So some of the background trees almost look um, more like blobs because they're so far away, it's hard to see all the detail, like all the pine needles and all of that. Um, this is going to be water. And then I also wanted some mountains in the background. Now, I'm not drawing a specific place. I'm sure there's somewhere in the world that looks similar to this. Um, I just kind of pick some landforms that I wanted to show. And then I've got a big space in the, in the sky here. I think I might add some clouds. And maybe I'll color my sky so it's kind of like sunset, like the sun just went down. Um, I think I'll do that. Okay, now before I finish drawing, I want to make sure I've included everything to show a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Um, so in my foreground right here, it's the area that's closest to me and lowest on my paper. The objects on my foreground, like this tree, are going to look the biggest. And if I had um, drawn a little bit more, I would show more detail. My middle ground is the area near the middle of my artwork. It, the objects are a little bit smaller, right? This tree is smaller than this one. I can still see some detail, but not as much. And it's in the middle of my paper. The background are the objects that are farthest away from me, so they appear the smallest and with the least amount of detail. It's also highest up on my picture. So now I'm going to take a minute to color in my landscape, and I'll show you when I'm done. days later I realized I forgot to show you my finished colored landscape so here it is I used colored pencils for the entire thing um, and I wanted to remind you when you're done coloring yours and you don't have to use colored pencils for yours you can use whatever you have but when you are done coloring in yours I need to see a photo or a video on Schoology and um, if you're taking a video, I want you to point out where your foreground, middle ground, and background are. And if you just submit a photo, you'll need to type out what's in your foreground, middle ground, and background. So for my example, I would say, hi, here is my landscape. My foreground shows hills of snow and this tree. My middle ground shows some more snow and this lake or body of water. And my background shows a few trees that are far away and some mountains with a um, sunrise or sunset. All right, I can't wait to see your landscapes.